Hi, I'm Michael Mann uh, for Bike Social and welcome to the glorious Isle of Man, where for the last 110 years, the finest road racers, the fastest road racers in the world have competed uh, across the 37 and 3 quarter mile circuit. But what constitutes the best lap? How does it all pan together? Well, there's a guy here who's stood on the podium 46 times, 23 times a winner. It's John McGuinness. So here we are at the bottom of Bray Hill. We're only about half a mile into the mountain course, yet this is already one of John's top five most important parts of the circuit. John, why are we here? Well, to be honest, it's really, really important because it's like you say, it's off the start line. You stood up there probably only 10 seconds away from when you dropped the clutch and, uh, you know, the nerves are jangling. Uh, there's all that atmosphere, there's all that pressure and hype on the start line. Then you just drop the clutch, you know, no, no sighting lap, no warm up lap, no time to get yourself warmed up or anything. It's just drop the clutch, boom, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, into sixth gear. We're in sixth gear now. Coming down Braille, you know, there's road ends all the way down there. The bike's heavy with fuel, uh, new rear tyre on, quite unstable. You're not quite ready for it, but on the other side of it, you have to be ready for it. You have to be absolutely on point straight away, right from the word go. And uh, for me, it just scares me, you know, I just think. It would be lovely just to set off and just bend yourself in, but you've just got to be boom, gone, so. And you can lose so much time down here, you know. If you're not 100% committed through the bottom of Bray Hill, you're going to be two or three seconds down already in the first half, in sort of the first mile of the uh, of the run, you're going to be two seconds down. So you can't afford to lose any time through this bit. So it's, it's probably, a, there's a different type of importance on lap one than there is laps two and then three and five as well with the fuel tank yeah full i mean tank. Lap, lap one's really really scary you're a bit cold you're not quite warmed up and you don't really know how the bike's going to react you know sometimes it'll come up wheelie and you know you're sort of, you're dancing around on the top of it like a bit of a jockey you're on the thumb brake you're trying to keep the wheels down all the way down and then you through bottom of braille over i goes leap again thumb brake and stuff and uh but lap two is quite sweet it's a hell of a rush on lap two you know you come through the top through the start and finish line, fifth gear into six, does let the bike just stretch its legs all the way down, all the way down through Braille, and it's just, you know, if, if I tell anybody, where do you want to watch, you know, your, your first TT, bring them here, stick them, stick the head through the, the ropes there, and just let them have a look <laughs> through it, and you, it's just such a buzz through here for the spectators and as a rider. Then you come in, lap three, and uh, you think, oh God, you know, new rear tire, 24 litres of fuel on board, and then uh, the bike's, there's a bit of a pig, to be fair, down Braille again on lap three and on, on lap five, but on the flying laps, it's sweet, really, really sweet and unbelievably enjoyable. And, uh, and it just, you sort of like threaded a needle down here, you know, you just can hardly see and then through the bottom of Braille, it looks really tight, the speed you come in and once you go through the bottom, it opens up and then you're up over Agos Leap. And I think it's such a famous bit of the track, such a, a daunting bit of the track, if you like, but such a real key important bit, you know, especially on the superbikes. The 600s, you can just sort of, ah, you can boss them all the way down here. But the big bikes, sometimes you feel like you're a bit of a passenger on them on the, on the opening lap. So it could well be the most important part of the circuit for you, but let's go and, uh, let's go and find some others, shall we? Perfect. So we're about four miles into the lap now, John. We're at uh, Glenvine, Balagheri, that kind of area. Why is this bit so important? Well, some people call it Balagheri, some people call it Balascheri. Uh, I call it Glenvine. Uh, as you can see, the approach is so, so fast. You've come out of Union Mills and you've climbed up, up the hill, past the campsite, so you're out of there, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, so you're absolutely flat out in top towards the approach of this corner. You go through a dip, and it's like a blind crest as you come over it. As soon as you come over the crest and you can see the apex, you basically just pitch the bike in. And then just on the super bike, back a gear, use your body as a bit of an air brake, a little bit of brake into the apex, back on the gas as early as you can. Because uh, the exit of this corner, you don't touch your brakes now, probably for about two or three miles before you get all the way to Breva Castle. So it's one of them corners that so frustrating at times as well. You know, all the years I've raced here and all the laps I've done, it's, uh, you never get it right 100% of the time, you know, you, you come in and you 
so you sort of turn in and you think, I could have gone around there quicker. Or, so it's always a, a little bit frustrating. The smaller bike, 600s, is just a little roll on the way in. Right. You, know, you just get towards it and it's just a little roll just to help you turn the bike in and then you're back on the gas again. But it's such a scary corner. I think, for me, it's one of them corners that you think about. As you're approaching it, you're thinking about it and you're thinking about it more. And then you, then you, you, there's all sorts of thoughts go through your head, you know. And to be honest, you know, this corner's claimed a few boys as well over the years. There's been a few uh, fatalities at this corner. We all, <laughs> we know the guy Martin, Fireball, famous. Of course. Like, you know, he, he, you know, should have been probably gone from that crash, to be fair. But uh, a bit frustrating. I was leading that race at the time as well. The bugger <laughs> got the race stuck. But, uh, yeah, Balagheri, Glen Vine. It's just, I think it's the approach and it's the thought of the corner. I mean, a lot of the corners lead into each other. So when they do, you don't have time to think about it. But you have a lot of time to think about it here. And, it's the first time where your bike sort of feels uh, settled. You know, you've got uh, Quarter Bridge, Braddon Bridge, into Union Mills, so you've scrubbed your tyres in, yeah. you've got everything up to pressure, everything's, you know, you're settled in, you've had a bit of a... And then, so it's it's full commitment, to be fair. And because the exit is a long, long drag all the way to Greba Castle, if you're not fast out of here again, you could lose two, three, three seconds all the way to the run to... Uh, and you can see that, you can see that in guys who... Just, you know, if you catch them in, in the practice sessions or in the race, they just hesitate a little bit more, and lose all the speed on the ex, on the apex of the corner, and then you can just drive past them all the way down the hill. So. When you're learning or you're just not quite got the confidence, it's the best way to approach it. Because, uh, you know, it's such a dangerous corner and, uh, you know, you don't want to be, uh, definitely not want to be running wide. And as you, as you enter it, there's a good camber on, on, the, on the apex. Yeah, as soon as you go over the crown of the road, it's sort of, the bike will just sort of slide and slide and slide. You're thinking, and you sort of got a light grip on the bike and you let it sort of slide and dance where it's going to be. And then as soon as you get, get the bike sort of upright, there's a couple of drop-offs, like wheelie drop-offs down there. So the bike comes up, down, down again and up again. So it's quite, it's quite a lively bit of track as well. You know? It's quite smooth, but still plenty going on, you know. And uh, But it's super, super important, important yeah. just to carry the speed, you know. Uh, it's uh, again scary but important gotta get it right <laughs>all right we're about nine miles in now we're at the uh, Glen Helen section so first commentary point and we've come out of Balacrane we're a mile up the road but uh, it's a really technical part of the circuit John it is really really technical really really difficult to learn quite dangerous as well no sort of runoffs it's the edge of the road is walls or a little bit of a, 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 a pavement and, and, and more walls to be fair but it's really technical it's always on the side of the tyre it's always uh, it's like part throttle half throttle never really full throttle never really in a straight line so uh, you know it's always uh, really really flowing but difficult difficult to learn and always there's a lot of few damp patches and always a few damp patches as well and first commentary point always a famous bit and I think it's just a lovely bit of the track I think you know it's just so naturally flowing, nice uphill uh, left hand there. And then, what I would say, one of the really important corners is the next corner, which is uh, Sarah's Cottage. Then, if you can get a real good run out of Sarah's Cottage and get flick through those uh, two rights and a left onto the Cronkavody straight, then you get a good run down the straight and you can sort of pass people or, you know, if somebody's holding you up through the section, you can sort of wait, be patient, and just get a good run onto the Cronkavody, get past them for the next run. But it's always quite physical this as well, quite hard, hard to change direction, especially the big bikes turning mm. and turning left to right and stuff. So by the time you get to the Concavody straight, it's a big deep breath and you know, get some air in your lungs. First uh, chance to relax a bit. Yeah, relax, maybe have a look at temperature gauge, flex, flex, flex the muscles a little bit and then back down to business for the next section around the 11th milestone. Fantastic. And the McGuinness is? Super proud of that one, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, normally you get uh, a corner named after you when you're gone, but to be still current and uh, Dead proud of it, you know. When I'm gone and there's still McGuinness is gonna be on the map forever, so really cool. Fantastic. Nice one. Right, saddle up. <laughs> so we're just over halfway around the circuit now and uh, you pick Corey Benz as your next most important. Yeah, I'm calling it Corey Benz, sort of Corey Benz section really. It's a, it's sort of a natural flowing left, right, left, right chicane type corner. <laughs> and uh, you know, getting through this little section here is super important. It carries all your speed down the Sulby Strait, which is arguably the fastest part of the track. Yeah. Uh, big, long straight. That's where the, uh, the speed trap yeah. times are recorded. But it's sort of... Uh, some sort of come rushing in from the uh, 
from the uh, Balacrae area, and then you want to come in a little bit more patient, uh, come in a little bit slower, get on a nice line, because it normally sends you out to the wrong side of the road before you peel in for this left. And you're sort of, sort of constantly recovering yourself all the time. You know, it's, because the bike's traveling so fast, and it's really hard to change direction. So if you come in on the perfect line, nice and smooth on the way in, sacrifice a little bit of time going into this first left, then once you've got this first left right, you can start picking the throttle up then. And on the side of the tyre so that the, the RPM picks up quicker, so you sort of whoa, whoa, just let it pick up, pick up, get under the screen, and get you can just tell when you've done it. When you've got it right, it's such a such a buzz, you just a little kick to yourself, you think, yes, I've got it right, and then uh, down the Subi straight, you like pull it maximum RPM, 13,750 RPM on the Super Bike and 190, 192, 193. Sometimes you get a bit of a slipstream and yeah. Get around mid 195 mile an hour. It feels speed. feels good if you got this section right. It gives you that speed down the silver. It straight. feels mega if you get it right. When you get it slightly wrong, it's so frustrating because it takes ages to recover. The bike takes ages to get back up to full speed, and uh, you know, it's so frustrating. Especially a little 600. You know, you, a lot of these riders, you know, they tend to hang off, knee out, and all that. I don't. I keep sort of tucked in and sort of stand on the pegs and steer at the balls of my feet and just try and keep tucked under the screen. And uh, such a mega sort of natural flowing bit of the track that uh, is really really fun to ride quite smooth as well really really grippy as well it's got somehow real good feel of grip and uh, you know you can you can get a real good run onto the Sulby straight so really really important especially if you're catching someone up you know you've caught some 10 seconds behind him and sort of you sort of can't get by him if you like you've got to hold back a little bit and then carry the speed carry the speed get onto the Sulby straight and you can, you can get past him as well so it's a great passing point great stuff well, it's not the most picturesque but one of the most important Let's head up to the mountain, yeah? Perfect. Let's go. John, there's so many important parts of the track. You can't come to the, to the Isle of Man without coming over the mountain. Um, we've just come out the gooseneck and we're on a climb going past Guthrie's here. But I guess it's the it's the whole climb that you're going to talk about, right? It is, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's really important. Quite a little bit back there, sort of the, the gooseneck. Once you turn around the gooseneck, it's so so steep, so it's really really important to carry lots of speed all the way around those uh, two lefts, around Joey's up towards Guthrie's. These three lefts taken as one well, up through the Guthrie section. But just after just after this next uh, left hander here, there's a little right kink, a cheeky little right kink with two walls, and uh, you get you get to it every time, and you say. A, uh, a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker for the pull up the mountain mile. So, you know, it's really, really important to uh, to get in there. It's quite easy on the six on the super bike. Again, it's a little bit like Glen Vine, the early ones. You, start, you come up to it, you go around, and you think, you know, it's a right, real frustrating uh, little bit of the track. But once you've gone around uh, the, the right hand onto the mountain mile, it's always one of those where you've worked hard all the way through this section. You can like have a bit of a rest. I always wiggle my toes and fingers. I'll have a little look down at the dashboard. Make Wave sure. at the helicopter. Yeah, do you know what? You used to be able to do on the slower bikes, but you, you didn't let go of the handlebars on the superbike. There's only a couple of places where you can actually take your hands off the handlebar to take a tear off off. And one of those places is Ramsey Hairpin for me. I always take a tear off off. So I've got a nice clear view for the mountain. There's not so many flies up here in trees, so yeah. you need a good, uh, a good view of the mountain. But, uh, yeah, super important bit. I mean, I'm just looking at the, uh, the view behind. It's absolutely stunning. And uh, this is one thing that I don't really see as a TT rider. I never get to see these views, but great to pull up, have a little chat about it and, uh, and see these views. But when you're racing, it's, we're looking that way with full concentration. It's a magical place. Really appreciate your time. Thanks very much for uh, running us through your mo most important bits and uh, best wishes for the season. Cool. Thanks so well, much. Well, we've got a couple of five layers here. What do you reckon? Should we go for a, for a spin? I'd be rude not to. Eh? Yeah.